Benjamin and his father climbed between the rocks. If they moved fast enough, they could probably see the fountain before darkness fell. Benjamin had brought sandwiches especially. They had no crusts. Benjamin's father insisted on that. They were meticulously crafted, packed away in neat boxes. For as many cycles as he could remember, Benjamin had made the climb with his father. Every time, the glow felt closer, more tangible. Benjamin hoped that one day, he'd be able to reach out and touch it. Benjamin ran. His father had sent word that it was ready, that it was actually done. There had been a few misfires. Benjamin had seen the rectangle who tested Mark 26. More of a trapezium now. jetpack was glorious. Benjamin's father motioned to the switches he'd made, told him to fly to them. Slowly though. Benjamin ignored him, of course, hitting the sequence as quickly as possible. He was dying to test this out properly, to fly to the fountain. A quick flight up to the fountain. Benjamin was sure his father wouldn't mind. The locked doors were uh, a precaution. The spike walls, a friendly reminder to be aware of his surroundings. That combination lock on the jetpack had, after all, been exceptionally easy to guess. was done. The fountain had sounded like a great idea when she started. An adventure. And more importantly, it was an adventure she could have alone. But she hadn't been alone. And they had seen her.
Benjamin was getting good at this. He could fly. It was important to stay focused, though. He had a fountain to get to. Get to the fountain, touch it, get home for dinner. His father wouldn't even notice he'd gone anywhere. The rectangle seemed remarkably unimpressed by Benjamin's jetpack. She didn't even ask about it. She just kept looking up and muttering about clouds. Initially slighted, Benjamin decided that this was a passing disinterest and she'd come round eventually. Anna tried to talk the obnoxiously single-minded square out of his plan. She should have left him, taken the next portal home and forgotten about that big splattering machine he kept motioning at heroically. They were halfway to the fountain. It occurred to Benjamin that his father would have become aware of his absence by now. Benjamin hoped that he'd be forgiven. You know, the folly of youth. Father had worked so hard on the jetpack. Anna tried again. She told Benjamin about the blinding light of the fountain, of the clouds which had defended it. She begged him not to carry on. He laughed it off. He wasn't afraid of clouds, so however pixelated they were, he could fly above them or swoop to avoid them. He scared her. Sarah was awed by the square. Its voice boomed, raised above the roar of the jetpack. You don't happen to have any sandwiches, do you?
Benjamin liked the little purple fan girl. And she was kind of cute. And she seemed really impressed with his jetpack. This! This was how Anna should have been looking at him all this time. But no, she was pure naysaying. She did understand the dream he had, the importance of what he was doing. That double jump was cool too. of knowledge sounded fantastic. Benjamin hadn't told her what it was, really. She suspected he didn't know. He ploughed off ahead while she jumped behind him, helping the increasingly resigned Anna. Sarah suspected Anna had no faith in Benjamin. She was scared. Ha! She had not the faith to believe in their leader. Sarah found herself thinking more Epically, she suspected it was Benjamin's heroism. Well, every hero needed a faithful disciple. Maybe that was her. It definitely wasn't Anna. was definitely done this time. She had tried. The self-aggrandizing square and the purple orator were never going to listen. She locked the door behind herself. She would stay here where it was safe. She could wait a few cycles. Who knew? Maybe this would be enough. She was done with adventure. And she had no idea what sandwiches even were. Benjamin carried her even higher. He swore the fountain was close, that soon she would see him touch it. He said it would reveal great things. She hoped he might share some of them with her. Sarah laughed, but she had no fear now. The doubter, Anna, had hidden away. surrounding the fountain was brighter than the rest. Light seemed to engulf the space around it, pouring into the chambers. Benjamin was close. The jetpack was working. Benjamin thought of his father again. He thought about how proud the big square would be of what he'd accomplished.
Sarah knew she could not follow Benjamin any further. She would wait here. He would return soon enough. And he would tell her everything. The lights grew even brighter. And with tears in his eyes, Benjamin ascended. shone before him, its light reverberating off the walls percussively. It was awesome. It was everything he had hoped. Sandwiches didn't matter anymore. Cute purple fangirls didn't matter anymore. It was only Benjamin and the fountain. The light engulfed Benjamin. He was he couldn't. Benjamin was blind. He had seen shadows, bright lights, data in innumerable and unimaginable combinations. And then it had gone. He wasn't ready. He sat. There was nothing else to do. He'd try and find his way home tomorrow. Benjamin was stuck up there. She had no idea if she'd ever see him again. The fountain had destroyed everything. It had unleashed the clouds. It had blinded Benjamin. Sarah swore she would see it again. She'd get back to it. She would know what it was and what it contained. <laughs> 